Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a throwback to December 2023 where I live streamed a repair of a PlayStation 5 that had a beep on beep off issue. I'm not going to spoil the video, but if you are new to the channel, my name is Dakota, I'm an electronics technician. I mainly work on games consoles, but I do work on other stuff as well. So if that's the sort of stuff you're into, be sure to get subscribed and turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss any future videos. If you want to organise a repair, get in touch at thecoder.repair. And if you need parts and supplies for games consoles or anything else, you can check those out at consolefix.shop. The reason I'm doing this video is because I have hundreds upon hundreds of not only successful repairs, but interesting unsuccessful repairs as well, which I've either recorded or live streamed and then just not shown. So as I go through them and stuff like that, I'm going to be obviously editing them out and stuff like that. There is going to be some fresh content as well, but I hope you enjoy this video. It is an interesting one and I well i think it'll be useful for the community and things like that so with that being said thank you for watching and i'll see you all later well you'll see me in a minute but past me yeah Ooh, we're living in the past bye today's video is sponsored by pcbway whether you've got a simple project that requires a quick mod board or you want to launch your own products to the world pcbway can help with fantastic pricing on multi-layer pcbs flex ribbons, 3D printing, and even laser cutting solutions, you're sure to find everything you'll need all in one place. Custom PCBs start from just $5 for a one to two layer board with a fast 24 hour build time and free shipping on orders over $30. PCBWay also offer aluminium PCBs starting at just $120 per square meter. Check out what PCBWay have to offer by clicking on the top link in the video description or in the top pinned comment and get your project started today. Thanks again to PCB Way for sponsoring the channel. Now let's get back to the video. Right, let's have a look at this. So apparently this has got no power. I apologise in advance, but PS5s are the only things that are failing right now. And that's all people keep sending me in. So, that's all we're going to be working on. It sucks to be me, right? Actually, no, sorry, it's not no power. It's blue light of death. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, two second blood, as always. Cool. Right, so two second blood. Lovely. So what I'm going to do with this, before I take it apart, I'm going to UART it and see if I can pick it up through UART. So we've got some lovely uh, dog hair there, I would assume. Either that or pubes. One of the two. All right, so on to desktop we go. There we go. Okay, UART, UART command ready. All right, well... The safe bridge is definitely working then. So what I'm going to do is clear my error logs. Okay. And yep, error logs are cleared. Good. Apply power to the PS5. Just press the power button once. And there's an error code. There we go. Okay, so... Right, let's see if we get any kind of errors here. Uh, so we've got 808 or 1120. And that says it is a RAM fault. DDR6 bank number 6. Yeah, okay, so we've got Samsung RAM here. So... There's three types of RAM on these. There's Samsung, there's Micron, and there's SK Hynix. Micron obviously absolutely sucks. You know, Micron RAM seems to fail quite a lot. But this RAM, this RAM don't really fail that often. Uh, but that being said, apparently, according to the codes that I've got, that's the issue. So that's the beauty about having access to UART is, you know, I mean, trying to find... Trying to find a RAM fault on a PS5 would be next to impossible without UART. You know, not without replacing the RAM. Pro tip, if you're trying to grab a hair, don't grab it with bent tweezers. Get off. Right, there we go. Right, so I'm going to run this at 350 for a minute just to preheat this because RAM is fairly sensitive. Right, so I've I've got my um, 
heat at 330 for now. This is just a preheat it because RAM is fairly sensitive and I don't want to end up damaging it. Or rather damaging the surrounding RAM. Just to get some heat in the board. I mean I could remove it at 3.30 but it'll take too long. I've increased to 4.40 now anyway. I'm going to put a nozzle on. Try and focus the heat a little bit. Actually, I might need to take this nozzle off to be fair because it's a little bit too thin. Damn. Hate it when that happens. Alright, so there's the old RAM chip. I'll just clean this up and then I'll find a donor board with a Samsung RAM chip on. Four forty all the way, never. Well, actually, I agree. Yeah, use four forty, but preheat the board first, and don't just use four forty from the get go. Not when there's no heat in the board, you would end up damaging something. Always preheat your board. Right, there's some Samsung. Good stuff. Uh, it wasn't me. Right, so I've got to preheat this board now. Up to four foot. Ow. Up to 440. Hi ho! Hi ho! Hi ho! It's off to be balling that we go. Oh, yeah, Andrew, definitely excited to see this. Of course he is. He loves Ram Reballs, doesn't he? Absolutely loves it so much that he replaces RAM on PS5 without even testing it first. It's got blue light of death. Yeah, re re replace your RAM. White light of death. Yeah, it's your RAM fill. Turns on and works fine. Replace your RAM fill. <laughs> Fucking loves to replace the RAM eagles. So, turn on the fume extractor. You know, I'm right. Never. Never. What? Y'all ain't got a smart workshop like me. So your lots of Lexus like, what the fuck you talking about, man? Yeah, buddy. It sort of wanted to turn the Christmas lights on. Sir, turn the Christmas lights on. <laughs> Oh uh, dear. Turn off the fume extractor. Cheers, bitch. Smart, smartest workshop in the world. Anyway, making my head go div. <laughs> Good. Oh, the power that I hold in my hands. It's unfathomable. Look at you using big words. Did you just want to addiction me? Right. Oh, shut up, phone. Right. Okay. Anyway, let's get this. Let's get. Let's get this going, shall we? Why the fuck does a ram need two hundred balls? One hundred eighty. Get it right. 
180. Don't know, but I need another Red Bull. Because I'm drinking rum and Red Bull. Ah. Someone take a guess how many spare balls are going to be there once we've finished. In your trousers? Never. Don't assume my gender. <laughs> ah, dearie me. Right. Anyway, let's get it on. We'll put about half over here. Damn it. And about half over here. Favourite job. Yep. Yeah, I've got to get that hair off because that will cause issues. So if you've got random pubes around your balls, when you go to reflow them, you're going to end up having all the ball pulled out all over the place. No one likes to pull out. I'm just saying. I really need to find my stencil for these. Actually, I'm pretty sure I've ordered a new one. I'll check in a minute. Almost certain I've ordered a new one of these. I ordered some spare parts for uh, Steam Deck. Man, it's getting kind of toasty in here now. 19.1 degrees Celsius. Apparently. Alright. 50% done. Another random tube. Right. Ah, damn it. Another random pube. Get off my stencils. Oh, get off my tweezers. See, so as that starts to melt, that those random hairs, so they've come off the... Um, Cotton swabs as I was cleaning the chip, but they will cause the solar balls to all fly all over the place when I'm reflowing the solder or flowing the solder balls down. Right, there we go. There were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spare. Right, airflow, 1%. Press on the chip to hold it in place. Stop it from pushing up with the mat. Because the mat will bubble a little bit. Okay, these are about to start to flow into place. So when they start to dry up like that, it's about ready for them to start flowing. You start to see them go dull, and then they'll just jump into place. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Get a hot plate. Got one. Don't use it. <laughs> Got one. Don't use it. Actually, no, it's not a hot plate. It's, I've got a... Um, I'll show you I'll show you on the overhead in a second. I've got a soldering iron attachment. I'm just too lazy to use the damn thing. 
I'll just reflow this with some fresh flux down. I'm at 440 degrees Celsius, by the way, for doing this. At 1% airflow. So the lowest setting on the airflow to stop it from blowing him away. Come on. There we go. Right. There we go. Extractor, turn off the fume extractor. Thank you. A little bit of IPI. Cool. Uh, by the way, that's the soldering iron attachment I was on about. Uh, just literally stick it onto the end of the soldering iron and wait for it to heat up, then drop your chip on. Just like a brass uh, attachment. Pretty good, but I don't use it very often. There we go. Well, hopefully this works. I won't worry about sorting the liquid metal or anything out yet. I'll just drop it back in. Uh, it still needs to cool down a tad. It's still a little bit warm. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah. One working PS5. Let's get paid, bitches. Okay, we have a disc in there. Please don't be FIFA. 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 Good lad, Star Wars. Never played it, but it's better than FIFA. All right, destroy sounds like it's working. Good. Let's turn on my TV. And there we go. We have a display. Sweet. So yeah, one faulty RAM chip. Right, there we go. What did you think of the repair? Uh, this was one which was not exactly unique. I mean, I replace RAM all the time on PlayStation 5s, but this was unique and interesting because this was really one of the first times that I really used UART on the PlayStation 5. We were just getting used to UART and things at that time, and there was a few, you know, different pieces of software out there. One of them was paid, and it later turned out that that software was kind of spying on the computer. There's a wasp in here, so I've got to be careful. Uh, kind of spying on the computer, and then there was also one which was released as open source, and then later on, uh, in 2024, I released my own UART software as well. So, yeah. This was just interesting to me because it was one of the first times that I'd used UART on the PlayStation 5. It wasn't the first time I'd used UART, period, well, just on the PlayStation 5. It was just being developed and we were just getting used to everything. So, yeah. Anyway, let me know what you think of this repair down in the video, uh, down in the dis description, down in the comments. And, uh, yeah, I always re read all of the comments. I don't always get to reply or sometimes I think they just don't want them to reply and stuff like that. So... Yeah, I always read them though. I read every single comment that people leave. Doesn't matter what video it's on, doesn't matter if it's now or in 10 years, I will still read it because, well, I'm self-centred and selfish and I like to be praised. So, please say good things. I know I'm ugly. What can I do? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. And as always, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. And that way you don't miss any future videos. And if you need parts and supplies for these, you can get those on my store, consolefix.shop. And if you need to book a repair, you can book it in at the code app repair. As always, all of the tools and stuff that I use in the videos, there's links in the video description. And there's also links to my websites and stuff down in the description as well. With that being said, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.